Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at some tips for Gutenberg. Uh, version 7.3 recently came out, so I thought it was a good time to just throw some tips together that might be helping you get used to using Gutenberg, especially if you started to dive in there and install the standalone version of Gutenberg, which you should if you want the latest and greatest. And uh, it's just a culmination of these tips that I've put out throughout other videos on this channel before. Hope you enjoy it. If you do, thumbs up. All right, let's get into the video. Start off with tip number one. It's to make sure that you have the Gutenberg plugin installed. Don't simply rely on the core Gutenberg features of your WordPress installation. Uh, check Gutenberg to see if, uh, or check your WordPress installation to see if you have Gutenberg installed. If not, go ahead and install it. Uh, by th At the time of this recording, I'm using 7.3. Uh, in this version. So that's tip number one. If you're looking to get the most out of Gutenberg, make sure you have the latest Gutenberg installed. All right, number two. Tip number two is the big three, as I like to call it. And by the big three, I mean three major areas that you'll constantly be interacting with uh, within Gutenberg. And it's going to vary depending on your comfort level and how advanced you get uh, and how advanced your pages are. But let's start with number one up here in the left. And this is uh, Big three, number one, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's this little control panel up here will do a whole bunch for you. And you might not notice it at first. Um, you might not get comfortable with it at first, but you can add a block at any time uh, by going to the add block section up here. Because sometimes what will happen is, I don't know, sometimes it still happens where you can't find the add block uh, within uh, between two paragraphs or you get down here and you're like, hey, I just want to add a block below this paragraph and you're just trying to figure out how to do it. Maybe you want this blank space and you don't want to use this. You can always come here and add another block uh, through this section right there. Uh, it also handles the undo and redo for you as well. So if you make a mistake, you can always uh, undo that or redo it depending on what you want to do. The next is the information, uh, what I call the information icon, but it's called content structure. This is going to just give you the fun little tips about uh, whatever it is that you are that you're writing out here. So how many words, the headings, the paragraphs, and the amount of blocks that you have. Uh, the most important element up here or tool is the block navigation. Because what happens is you're trying to figure things out. You're trying to click in here. You're trying to click to this image. I mean, this is pretty easy, but sometimes we start to build more complex pages, uh, tons of content, tons of nested blocks, what have you. And you're just trying to get in there and you can't figure out which one to click on, or you're trying to click on the parent uh, block and you can't, because this is a three column block, and I'm trying to click on, well, what's the parent block here? I'm trying to get to the full column control. I can't, but if I go up here, I can go to the block navigation, I can click on columns, and then that'll allow me to select this entire uh, column block. So very, very useful. You'll spend a lot of time in the block navigation section. And this is sort of new, uh, at least uh, I'm recognizing it since installing version 7.3, and you can hit escape a couple times. You'll see this happen. So I'm going to click into this paragraph block, and I'm going to hit escape. And you'll notice uh, the outline change. So the formatting was lost, and now it says paragraph. I'm going to do it one more time. Click in. So I'm editing my paragraph. You can see my formatting buttons. I'm going to hit escape. It's going to call it the paragraph. And also notice up here, the icon changes. So I have this pointer icon. I'll click in. I have the edit icon. If I hit escape one more time, you'll see that now I can click on any element. And at first, it selects the entire column block. And if I click inside of it, it selects just the individual column. And I can use this to select blocks with one single click and then get a lot more granular uh, of the interior blocks. Uh, in the case of this column section here, it has three columns in it. But my first click uh, highlights and activates the entire column block. One more click goes into the individual column. If I double click, I now am able to edit uh, the contents of that block. So that's a long way of saying if you hit escape, you can have this pointer to select the individual individual block. And if you double click into it, you can go in and edit a block. So nice little touch. Um, these are things that are kind of hidden at first. It's hard to uh, notice these things. And uh, sometimes navigating blocks, managing a whole bunch of blocks can get uh, pretty cumbersome. So we want to make sure that, you know, you have the tools available to you. Now, number two of part as part of the big three is this section. Every block will have its own options in line to the block. So in the case of a paragraph block, um, I have my alignment options. I have my bold, italicized link. 
I drop down here and I can justify it and underline it. I have more options here by inserting after and before, edit as HTML. I have a bunch of options here. Um, and that allows you to do different things depending on what kind of block you're looking at. You can also change the block and it's all relative to the context of what type of block. So I can't change a bunch of text to an image, but it certainly gives me the ability to switch it to a list, a quote, a verse, uh, or a heading, you know, if I wanted to. Uh, and I can always quickly switch back from that. So Gutenberg is smart enough to understand the context of the block and then give you available options there. If I click on the image, you can see, well, I don't get formatting uh, options because it's not something that you would format like text uh, naturally, but you'd be able to replace it, upload it, uh, or link it uh, if you wanted to adjust the images. So it's always going to change depending on the block. And that's the second area you have to pay attention to. That's number two out of the big three is sometimes you'll be working in blocks, uh, styling the blocks, managing the blocks over here, which brings us to the third section, which is the right hand panel uh, of Gutenberg. And this is going to be each block gets its own options over here as well. Now you can see where this gets kind of daunting, but once you get comfortable with it, uh, Gutenberg becomes really powerful. So we have settings that are unique to each block in the right hand side. So in the case of a paragraph block, you know, you might have an option like this drop cap and I can check that off and that'll make the L in the start of that paragraph a lot larger. I can change the size uh, of the uh, of the text, uh, you know, proportion to what the options are here or I can customize it depending on, you know, where I want to go with it. Um, I have particular color settings and this is going to vary between blocks. It's going to vary between theme options. Um, in this example, I'm using the 2020 theme, uh, but I can do text color, you know, pink and then gray. You know, I can kind of play with it here, clear it, um, you know, but every block is going to have its own unique. I can go round for this one. It's going to have its own unique uh, options and settings that you can play with with each block. And that is the power of Gutenberg. You know, it's the double edged sword kind of complex to get used to it at first, but once you harness the power of what I call the big three, again, uh, the options up in the upper left hand side, the inline options to the block, and then the right hand side with its own unique options per block. Once you harness the power of that, Gutenberg becomes a lot easier to understand and a lot more manageable. All right, tip number two is pretty big, pretty long. We'll talk about tip number three, and that is the options panel up here, the settings panel up here. There's so many options, so many settings. Uh, but if you go over to the block manager, you can disable a whole bunch of things that you think you'll never ever use. Because let's face it, if I come in here, I scroll down, I'm starting to look at all of these things. Like if I went to embeds, I'd be like, oh man, I'm never going to use all these places. Issue, never going to use it. Meetup, never going to use it. Mixed cloud, never going to use it. How do I get rid of all of these blocks that I think I'll never ever use? You go to the block manager and you can disable them. So if I went down to the embeds and unchecked it. It's going to uncheck all of them. But I say, well, I'm going to use Twitter. I'm going to use YouTube and I'm going to use Instagram. These will be the three, uh, you know, places I might embed from uh, in the future. If I went to Jetpack and said, I don't want any of these, but I do want the business hours uh, block, then I can enable that. We'll close this. Then we go into Gutenberg, we'll go to embeds and boom, I only have these three uh, blocks that I have to worry about. Same with Jetpack, I only enabled the business hours block. And you know, that's one way to streamline uh, dealing with the large amount of blocks that you might be presented with. So great way to streamline it for your clients, great way to streamline it for yourself uh, if you don't want to feel all that block overhead. Tip number four is a couple other options inside of the options tab here. Um, top toolbar. So if you're really struggling or you just have a really complex Gutenberg page, if you're really struggling to uh, relive the days of the classic editor and uh, you're just trying to say, hey man, I, I really I, I really like that experience. I don't like having all these formatting buttons uh, overlaying on top of these other paragraphs. And I totally understand, it, especially if you have long form content. Uh, you can pin this and I've talked about this in another video. You can pin this to the top. So you can go top toolbar and give me all those formatting options right up top. So while I click into a paragraph, now it's a lot cleaner. Uh, that inline editor is out of the way uh, and everything is up 
top. So you can kind of move that and focus on all of your Gutenberg or two out of those big three uh, options all the way up top uh, in your editor screen. So it cleans that up a little bit, makes life a little bit easier, puts all of those options up there. And if that's something that tickles your fancy for organizing your Gutenberg pages, I recommend it. Again, view top toolbar, and that'll lock that right at the top. Tip number five, uh, you have to switch modes. You have to go to spotlight mode, and this will allow you to just focus on a block one at a time. I don't find this one particularly useful for myself, um, unless I was training somebody on how to use a particular Gutenberg page. So it kind of just fades out the other elements and you can see, or the other blocks I should say, you should see as I click into these sections, um, they highlight. So it just gives you that natural focus uh, as is the name, uh, spotlight mode. It allows you to focus in on those areas uh, and sort of just um, you know not be distracted by those other blocks. Kind of useful, especially if you're training somebody um, I don't know, spotlight mode is not that bad. Check it out if that's something that you want to work with. All right, the last tip that I'll have for you that's that really has me, you know, moving through Gutenberg uh, through um, a little bit faster than when I first got started is the keyboard shortcuts. There's a ton. So again, if you go to this uh, option up here and you go to keyboard shortcuts, you can see all of the keyboard shortcuts. But the one that I use probably the most is when I get to a new block, if I just hit the forward slash, it's going to pull up all of uh, these blocks that I can use in this setting here. So it's either gonna be something like an image, uh, a video, a product, whatever it might be. It allows me to find things a little bit easier. I can start actually typing the word columns, I can select columns, and then I can go ahead and insert my columns. So that forward slash when you get to a new block is very handy. It's one that I use often. I don't use a lot of other short codes, um, you know, when I'm building stuff out. But uh, that forward slash one really helps me, you know, load things up pretty quickly. Again, if I want to embed a video, insert from URL, you know, it really helps. Once you start getting into the groove of things and you're really writing some long form content, uh, that's when that one really wins that one. So those are the tips I have for getting cozy with Gutenberg. I really hope you're enjoying your Gutenberg experience. There's going to be a more Gutenberg videos on this channel. As you can tell, still a little sick, trying to get through it. Hopefully by, uh, by the next week, I'll get my voice back. I appreciate everybody watching the video. Subscribe if you want more. Tell your friends. Share it on social media. Thumbs up. We'll see you in the next video.